want to do something today that I actually have been meaning to do um, for many years with myself, but I never had really the time. So everything you know that I'm preaching to you, I'm doing myself. And um, this is something uh, that I um, started to do as a teenager, but never really had the time to develop. So basically what I'm trying to do is to divide the cello to three parts. Okay, so I call them three cellos, okay? Cello A, cello B, and cello C. We don't spend enough time thinking of this second cello and third cello as we treat the first cello. Okay, does it make sense? Now, so this book, I love it. It, it. You will see if you do it for a week or so, and then you go back to your pieces, it will start making sense. In fact, when you play in high positions in concertos, it's usually a climax of a phrase, yeah, in a slow, or it's usually fast in one position. It's not that difficult if you know where you are. We always go there like we climb the Everest. We always go there just for a few minutes, and we are so scared of it, and we go back. So maybe practice instead of 80% of your day here, 15%, no, 19% here, and 1% here. Just do this for a while, for, for a few weeks in the summer. Do 80% in cello, in the second cello, and you will see. Now, just for the fun, before we go on, you all played the four elegy, and uh, Anita, you're playing it now. Let's play it in second cello, okay? Don't freak out, it's not difficult. We're gonna get to third cello at, at one point, but let's first find, let's tune the cello. <laughs> the E flat and put your thumb an octave below. Okay, now let's do it because uh, this is first time for you. Let's just play it without rhythm, two bows for each note, okay? But really try to um, anticipate where you're going. If you're shifting from Sol, from G to B flat, like here. <laughs> Try to feel the same way. You're just shifting from G to B flat. It's just a different part. It's a different cello. But it's the same little stupid easy shift. Okay? So find the A. Ready? Two balls for each note. More peaks. G. 
Yeah, see, it's not, it's really not difficult. It's not difficult. And then to do it here, you just do it on a different instrument. Treat it as a different instrument. Just to give you an example, we just played very comfortably from the G. But if you'd go to Schumann Concerto, it's the same. This is E, C. B flat. It's like, so if you start thinking like this, it's not difficult. We just have to spend more time there. Now, there are two more books, and I sent you some of the exercise with the Everest drawing that I did. I sent you one exercise, which is from a book called Solfege de Solfege. It's a French book. I don't know if you do it in school, but I used to do it in my high school. And that was the first time I started thinking in that way. So there's one exercise in that book, which I sent you. Now, you can download it on IMSAP. The whole book is teaching you rhythm and basic solfege. That's a book number one. If you treat it, that book as your first cello book for cello two and cello three, it will be amazing. Now, this is all in, 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 um, in G clef, and then it goes to, uh, to uh, bass clef. So that's why I prefer the dot tower because it's all in F clef, which is our brain is trained cello one F clef. So if you do this book, you start thinking the same way. E is E, E is E. And that's why, but you can, of course, eventually play it in, in G clef. So solfege de solfege is great. I want to do this exercise I gave you. So we start in cello one, which is really easy. It's a... Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do, si, la, sol, si, la, sol. That's what you do in the, um, when you're a child, maybe in Paris too. So let's play it once here. Now, by the way, all those exercises, I, and when I used to give dot tower to my students back many years ago, uh, you can do on any key. Yeah, you don't have to do it. You can start second cello half step higher. Yeah, you just move up and you do the same thing. So first learn it the way it's written. So your eyes and your fingers will match the notes, but then it's all patterns. So this pattern is a great one to do all over the cello. Let's play it in cello one. Taka, taka, always open strings, by the way. One, and. <laughs> fingers when you play it when you play the open string make sure that your hand is completely relaxed sometimes if you spend too much time on second cello then you realize that you're actually much more tight in first cello so it's a great realization if you spend half an hour here yeah and then you go here but tune the second cello <laughs> find the do now of course it's third finger let's do it a little slower and second cello to third cello. So, tune your third cello. And put your thumb only on A and D now. And let's play the exercise. And. Uh, 
uh, for you, this book, again, it's a wonderful book, and this exercise in particular, I think, is the best one for the three cellos, the entire page that you have. Um, the only advantage of it, uh, uh, disadvantage, I would say, is that it's not in the key that our brain thinks automatically. So if you see tenor clef, it might be confusing. F clef, if I see a note, at least me, in the bass clef, if it's an E, I don't care where I play it, I see E. Here you have to maybe calculate, maybe not, maybe it's easy for you. But the exercise itself is really good. So if you can do it at home, all eight of them, all eight of them and the variations if you get bored, you will see tremendous progress in your playing. But let's try to do it first in, in uh, cello one, okay, in the first cello, and we do it four in a bow. Okay, lift and pitch and shift are crucial. Let's do ta da di da 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 and. is just a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, when you see fourth finger, of course, you don't use it in second cello and third cello. Okay, now let's do first one, the first exercise in second cello. So always do the same, tune it. So what we're doing now, what we did before was really mastering the first position of the second and third cello. That's what we did for the last hour. Now we're going to master all position from first to fourth, so the whole octave. And that will master the entire second cello and then the third cello. So let's do it two in a bow slow. Two in a bow slow. Remember to lift and pitch and nails to the bridge. One, ta, ta, ta. I know it's hard, but you see um, B, but it doesn't really look like this B for your brain. It looks like this B. Try to really envision a B. So it's first position. You have to feel, I'm playing now first position. That's first position. It's not high on the cello anymore. Okay, so let's do four. Da, da, di, da, tan, ta, and. This is first position on a very, very tiny cello. <laughs> okay? First position. Let's do ti da di da from two, 60 notes. And. session. Find the, the G of the swan is in the fourth position of any of the cellos that we did today. So here you have the neck to find it. It's easy. 
maybe in the second cello it could be your thumb or the E, whatever it is. But let's try to play the swan now. And again, two bows on every note, no rhythm. But I want you to start feeling that the G of the swan here is not the worst enemy in the world. It's actually not difficult. So let's find the G not by finding it here. Find the second cello. This is first position. If you need to go through it, fine. Find it. Now let's try to play. So we start in the fourth. This is for us from now on, fourth position, second cello. Okay? So we do it two bows. and we go to G in fourth position. Okay, but do this game. If you practice the second cello for half an hour, you do those exercises, take a melody, preferably that you know really well, which is first position. I mean, if you think about it, most of our repertoire is from the low C to here, then of course we go also up, but this is where we feel comfortable. If you can play those melodies, Brahms E, Beethoven, you can do it here. Yeah, find the, let's try one. So all we need is to go from A to E. That's the fourth position. start thinking like this it's it's really it does miracles to your orientation on the cello so do the scales do the thirds do everything you do as cellist but spend more time on camp b and camp c the more time you spend here not that we play so much there this will become more e easier and this will be piece of cake and i'm telling you from my own experience you realize if you play a lot in this position that when you go back you are actually more tense <laughs> here than here. Uh, to go from this note is more distance than to do it on the second cello. But second cello, I mean, you know how many hours you spend and it's never secure. It's always scary. So try to do it, play the swan, play whatever you want here, but do those exercises and um, send me maybe videos of those pieces in second cello or in third cello. And I'm really interested to see what, uh, what will happen. Luckily, with this quarantine, at least for me, I can say that I have the time to really um, dig into this method that I've been thinking about for years. Um, I'm sharing it with you because I can really see that it works, and especially on a, on a very young child. So if you can, if you can see that in, uh, into your playing, add it to your playing, um, I think it would be amazing, but I'm curious to see what you feel about it. If you felt that you play a slow exercise in cello two, and it's easy, don't think that it's easy just because it's slow. Say the names of the notes. I mean, the point of this is to really put your finger here, 
like you put it on B here and you say it's B. I don't need to practice it. Put it here and feel this is B on the G string. This is D. This is F, F sharp. Yeah, so you start feeling exactly like here. You know the feeling. If you play an orchestra and it's here and you have to go to F sharp, you don't think, you don't practice it. Imagine a day where you can do it here. It, why, it, think for yourself, why should it be different? I mean, it's, it's the same you know, distance, as, even smaller. So treat this as a cello by itself, cello by itself, cello by itself. Yeah? Okay? Have a good week. See you next week. So I might assign you. I'm so happy that you, are, uh, you guys are uh, coming every week. Of course, you don't have to. Tell your friends to join us because in September there will be so much... Um, in the back, but um, I will send you uh, numbers like dots hour 11, second cello, so you will understand what I mean, so we can play them together in the, in the session, okay? But invest in the foyer, the number nine, try to do it, all the strings, third cello, second cello, as much as you can, and um, yeah, and then this um, solfege de solfege, by the way, it's a great book also for solfege. So if you sing it and then play it or play it, it's a great thing. Okay? Have a good week.